Hey, hey, it's TDA, and this is a full step by step strategy guide on House Ikaz. If you're playing on conquest mode, you'll be getting different bonuses and objectives every single game, and it's impossible to make a guide for every variation of that, so I'll be showing you a solid default strategy on the Battle for Arrakis mode. That should also serve as a solid baseline for the other two modes as well. I'll be honest, this is probably the hardest faction to play. Housey Cast is all about sanctuaries, which are basically neutral villages that you do not capture, but that you surround with your own territory instead. That will give you a massive boost to all your surrounding villages, especially the one that you turn into a garden resort. It's a pretty decent faction if you want to go for a hegemony victory, but personally I think that they're best at a straight up military victory in the late game. For the counselors, I think Sanya is a pretty decent first pick. Not only do you get a lot of benefits from actually having the sanctuaries that you want anyway, but you actually turn masterpieces into something that gives you something because initially they don't do much by themselves. Now if you really want to lean more into the whole masterpiece things then Misa, Mesa or whatever you want to call her is actually a pretty decent second choice although I do think that she is hard to pull off correctly so if you pick her make sure that you remember that you did so because you'll need to work for it. I'll actually show you how to use her in this strategy guide but if you want a safer second pick then go with Whitmore instead. Having military units start with more experience is always a good thing and having a second champion is just a straight up good thing to have as well. I do think that Elisa is probably the weakest choice amongst all of them. Even though having immunity from some of the resolutions can be very useful and getting Landstrat styling is always a good thing as well. It's a little bit of a boring choice and it doesn't really give you any leverage over your opponents. At the start of the game, as always, queue up two military units, probably one squire and one musketeer, and make sure you queue up a second ornithopter. Select the ornithopter you already have, put it to auto recon, and send it towards the spouse spice zone that you should already have uncovered. Make sure that you go for the village first, it's always on a, a flat area like this, it's usually really easy to find, and you want to send your military units to that village as soon as you can. Once you have the village uncovered, send your ornithopter to the back of your base, towards the edge of the map. The reason for sending it over here is that you want to have an idea of the layout of the different zones for the sanctuary purpose. Send your two military units to the village and make sure that you capture it as soon as possible. And of course, make sure you keep your range unit back a little bit. Now in this case my village has two melee units but if there's a range unit in there make sure you take that one out first and make sure that you have your melee unit next to it. Once you get your first village research composite materials first it will give you extra plastic production and that will allow you to actually build up your villages and then queue up local dialogue studies second so you can actually expand faster. You're also going to want to build a refinery in that first town as well. Now you should have your second ornithopter exploring as well and you can send your military units to a second village and capture that pretty much straight away. Ideally that's a village with minerals so you get some extra plastic production and just make sure it's one close to your village as well. In that second village start producing a plastic factory. Make sure to deploy your harvester, set it to auto recall and add an accrue to it. I also recommend building a research hub in the first village as well as the second building because that extra knowledge is going to come in hand in the early game. Your first agent should always go into a ruckus because not only will that give you authority production, it will also allow you to discover things on the field and I would recommend prioritizing those that give you technology. Around the same time your first two technologies should be done and I recommend going for Artistic Aspirations next followed by Filtration Systems. Now why are we picking these? The 50% reduction to building slots actually means you're going to save a massive amount of plastic grid if you get this early on. And the Filtration Systems allow you to produce water more efficiently and on top of that also get some spice production going. For the second building in the second village you're going to want a recruitment office so you can get some manpower production going as well. Okay, and now it is sanctuary planning time. You do need to consider where you're going to build your sanctuaries. It's probably not going to happen anywhere near the center of the map because your enemies are there. So surrounding any area here is probably going to be never happen. Uh, same holds for any zone near a desert because you can't actually conquer the zone. So this is where scouting the backside near the edge of the map comes in. If you, for example, conquer this zone over here, that means that I already have this one, I will also have this one. And then this zone is completely surrounded because the edge of the map doesn't actually count as someone that something that needs to be surrounded. So 
This could easily be turned into a sanctuary by just conquering this zone. If I would want to turn this zone to a sanctuary, I would also need to conquer this zone, this zone, this zone, and this zone. It's a little bit more work, but it does mean that the village trades are going to be doubled in all these adjacent zones rather than just these two if I turn this one into a sanctuary. Now it's also worth mentioning that these village trades are not going to be much use of you if you don't actually build your villages toward them. Sometimes it's things like this, just agent recruitment speed, which will always be active if as long as you control the village. But if you have something like this with manpower production when the village has at least one building of each type, you're actually going to need to think about what you build in those villages in order to make use of that. In this specific case, I'm actually going to turn this zone into a sanctuary because it has a relatively low value and this zone is very valuable instead. That does mean I'm going to lose out on the village trades being buffed in these two zones, but I'm getting a very valuable zone in return for that. In order to conquer any village, you should typically bring at least as many units as the strength of the village. It just makes, it sh makes sure that you don't run into any issues and don't lose any units without any cause. Now, I typically recommend um, keeping as many melee as ranged units just have some nice little balance. But build the melee unit first, so your third unit should be a melee unit. Now if you're not entirely sure what to build next in your cities and you're not low on anything in particular, building a wholesale market is normally a very good idea because it doesn't cost you much and it gives you some extra salary production. However, with the house ikaz, building masterpieces instead is probably better. Not only are you going to get two Solari from that anyway, because you have the bonus from Sanya, you're also going to get various other bonuses. For example, you're going to get the, the 100 Solari from completing one from the artistic aspirations that we just completed. So all in all, going for the masterpiece is usually better. Just make sure that you don't want to destroy these later, because you're, that's going to cost you authority and lance rod standing. When voting in the launch route, I would recommend just dumping all your votes into something that you really, really want. But save a few votes for anything that's the darling of the minor houses. Just put something, a little bit of something towards that, just in case this actually passes. This will just get you a free launch route standing. Now you're still in your expansion phase, so you should definitely put your second agent into a ruckus as well. So you get some more authority production going. Once you reach 2,500 hegemony, I recommend that you build a administrative hall in your main city. Now, there is a very good argument to be made for building a research center instead, because 25% knowledge is huge. Um, so either one of those will be fine. I typically prefer going with the administrative hall instead, because the Solari is a nice bonus, but especially the authority production will help you expand more aggressively. You're getting to the mid game now and it's a little bit less obvious where you should go with your technology next because it depends a little bit on your specific situation. Modular parts is always a good option because optimizing your spice production is never a bad thing. Cultural tourism can be really good if you have more than one sanctuary and honestly going for outpost logistics is typically one of my favorites because it helps you expand even more aggressively that's assuming you still have room to expand if you don't you might want to go into the military tree because pretty much anything here helps you stay alive um, specifically martial perfectionism is one that's very nice to pick up early because you can use those extra costly units to make them a lot more strong than they would normally be Picking up army logistics helps them keep alive and the war banner unit is pretty nice as well and having the champion buff everything is really awesome as well. So again pretty much anything in this tree is pretty much a solid option. I typically mostly ignore this tree when playing house he has because all the specials are near the bottom and everything else is just not very appealing. Also don't forget you can trade with your neighbors to get stuff you want. If you for example need more Plascree to expand or build something in your main base then just spend some Solari on that if you have an excess of that for example and, and get that done. So in order to prepare for the end game you want to do pretty much the same things all over again in every single game. So for one you want to make sure you have maintenance centers and spy silos covering all your villages especially of course the ones that have the most expensive buildings. You're probably going to want to have a uh, ornithopter on each of your harvesters that just keeps them a lot safer than without it also boosts their production by quite a bit so that's definitely worth doing as soon as you start upgrading these things and you're going to need at least two spice fields and preferably a third as well so i have one over here now if you can get some more of these um 
sanctuaries along the way, the be all the better. You can easily get those usually by just building around the edge of the map. It's kind of interesting that House Ecas does actually want to kind of expand across the edge of the map. And there's another reason because expanding across the edge of the map actually it makes for a very viable uh, strategy in terms of military as well. You also want to get your garden resort up as soon as you have a sanctuary available. And you want to build that next to that sanctuary, preferably in a spot if you can. That allows you to have a second sanctuary next to it, or even a third maybe. Because that just makes this building completely overpowered. It only costs 500 gold. And as you can see, I have two sanctuaries right next to it right now. And producing five knowledge and two influence per um, day. This is just insane if you compare that with the total amount of knowledge gain that I have. Okay, so now for a little trick with Mesa, the uh, hard advisor that I picked in the start. Remember these villages that you are using as a sanctuary? Well, you can actually just attack them. Build at least one of each masterpiece, and you can build several if you have the appropriate building in your headquarters. And then just abandon the villages again. The masterpieces will stay in place and the village will turn back into a sanctuary. And you will get your buffs back in your garden resort. And on top of that, because this is now again a neutral village, you'll get a buff to your authority production. If you do it twice, like I've done in both my sanctuaries over there, uh, I actually get the buff six times. So that's an 18% buff to my authority production now you don't necessarily need to do this with the um these neutral villages over here in your sanctuaries but these sanctuaries cannot be attacked so they are completely off limits for your enemies uh, until they actually attack your your areas around that and they're pretty safe and protected in that regard you can do it with any zone across the map if you want but this is a very easy way to get a massive boost to your authority production Okay, so time to focus on actually winning the game, and with this house you're probably going to do that through the use of a mixed army. The squire unit is not that bad, and it's a decent military melee unit to start out with, but you're probably going to want to switch most of your melee and your front line to knights. Knights with 20% damage received per other non-mechanical unit thereby is awesome, they are really really hard to kill, they do a fair amount of damage, and that also means that they're perfect to upgrade to your champion. You are allowed to upgrade one of your units to a champion. And every time this thing kills something, you will get free hegemony. Now, melee units by themselves are not going to cut it. So you want to bring a fair amount of musketeers. About half your force. A little less than half your force should typically be a musketeer. They just do a pretty nice range damage. You can pick off enemy flying units and stuff like that. So all in all, they're pretty good. However, the most awesome unit i think in this faction is the war banner not only are these pretty decent units by themselves they do a fair amount of damage they also give uh, a nice buff to your other units and a debuff to the enemy units so there's no reason not to bring like at least one but preferably two of these in your army now i'm not a huge fan of most of the flying units in this game anyway so i might be a little bit biased but the Siren itself, I think, is not worth, worth building. It's definitely not worth the cost. It's not the worst unit in the world, but they tend to go down really fast if the enemy focus fires on them and they're quite expensive to make. And they don't just bring any useful buffs other than a demolition attack that you can also get elsewhere. So basically, mix and match most of the units you have available to you. Just skip the uh, Fencer because honestly, it's quite useless. Uh, it's mostly strong by itself and you don't want your units to be by themselves and you should be fine. Of course, make sure you actually make use of the upgraded version that you get by unlocking Martial Perfectionism because this makes your units that much stronger and that will make them individually a force to be reckoned with. The faction's capital ship called the Monument is kind of a win more unit. By the time you can actually build this, you're probably already winning. But if you can, well, it will boost your army quite significantly since it will allow you to get 20% on all your non-mechanical units, which is a huge buff. When it comes to the armory options, I preferably pick things that actually increase the attack damage and also increase the upkeep. So to make sure you don't do this early. But once you do, this is just a free bonus. I also really like the upgrades that actually give you additional health. You sacrifice a little bit of power for it, but your, enemy, your units become much more durable, which is really handy if you're trying to attack enemy bases. 
And specifically for that, upgrading the Knights with the Padded Shielding is again very useful along with the War Banners upgrade to actually do more damage to armor. If you're doing your job, then there will probably be an assassination attempt on your life. Um, the, re the way to actually make sure that doesn't happen is make sure you use the cell search operation on your uh, areas. And then if you have this little investigate icon over your cities, you can usually get something, someone to tell you like, hey, there might be an infiltration cell here. You send a military unit to your city, you will see a... A timer starting like this and once this is done they will find the cell you can remove it and set back the assassination attempt. Near the end of the game I recommend that your main base looks something like this. I think these are the best bonuses to get and honestly you are going to build pretty much all the buildings anyway with the exception of the blue ones. Of those it doesn't really matter which one the second is as long as you build the research center because this one is just really really good. House has and it takes a little time to get going, but once it does, it's really, really strong. You're probably going to win through hegemony because your champion unit is going to rake in thousands upon thousands of hegemony. So even if you're just destroying your enemies, you're probably going to hit that 30k mark before you actually wipe them out. But either way, you've won, so there's nothing to complain about. Now again, this is definitely one of the more tricky factions to play, but I do think they kind of have a lot of interesting mechanics going for them, so I hope you enjoy them as much as I do. Just as a quick reminder, there's nothing wrong with just picking Whitmer. It's a very strong counselor as well, so you don't need to go do all the tricky stuff with Mesa. Uh, just combine him with Sanya and you're pretty much good to go. Now, if you found this useful, don't forget to give it a like so other people can find it as well. And I hope to catch you in the next one.